This is like an intense, super ambitious energy where it's like, I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it, and I'm going to make it happen now. If you want to make radical, dramatic, wild changes to your life and do so in a way that's long lasting and that creates greater stability moving forward, now is your moment. Hi everyone, Heather here with Astrology with Heather.com and I am back with another super exciting extended two week forecast. This one is for August 11th all the way through to August 27th, the entire waning phase of the lunar cycle beginning with the full moon in the sign of Aquarius which is happening on August 11th. This full moon is a little intense. <laughs> I would equate it to something like a pressure cooker that's just like building and building and building, except instead of cooking your food, it just like burns it or starts on fire, <laughs> which I know sounds terrible, um, but it is kind of a continuation of an energy that we've been experiencing for the last couple of weeks ever since we had the uh, conjunction between Uranus, the North Node and Mars. This is activating that energy. This is highlighting that conjunction. This is also highlighting the square between Uranus and Saturn, which has been ongoing since the start of 2021. So this is a big moment in time, a big energy, and a lot of shifting and rearranging and disruption is taking place. Um, on the flip side, we're experiencing this period of incredible new opportunity. So long as you're willing to put in the work, so long as you're not afraid of the effort effort that's going to be required for you to get where you want to go, you'll be able to get there. If you want to make radical, dramatic, wild changes to your life and do so in a way that's long lasting and that creates greater stability moving forward, even though it's going to require some instability in the moment, now is your moment. And so I do like this energy for that, but it doesn't feel good. And this full moon in particular, it's in the sign of Aquarius and it's conjunct Saturn. There's good and bad to this energy. So because Saturn is in this configuration where it's in a square with Uranus and um, Mars still to a certain extent, because it's in that, that square and that T-square um, that it's been forming with the nodes and all of that, it is it is a little bit pressurized. There's this energy of Uranus, North Node, Mars wanting to jump all in, change something really quickly, do something really dramatic. This is like an intense, super ambitious energy where it's like, I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it, and I'm going to make it happen now. Saturn, on the other hand, says, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you have to do this the right way. You can't just do it the fast way. You can't just jump in all willy-nilly. You have to make sure that you're taking the proper steps, that you're following the proper procedures, that you have the paperwork in a row, that you have your foundations all set up. So that way, when you do make these changes, you're not creating a giant mess in your path. And so that is what Saturn is delivering to us all throughout this energy. For the past few weeks, it's been like this. But Saturn in particular in this configuration is super highlighted, super illuminated with the moon. Um, luckily for the moon, that conjunction to Saturn is technically a reception. And so that's going to help the energy a little bit where the moon is being um, assisted in a lot of ways by Saturn, even with this square configuration. And so I would say that that is kind of the one area where there's a benefit to the Saturnian component. It's really about taking... It's, a, it's about getting ha a handle on your emotions and not letting your emotions and your reactions and um, like everything that's going on internally in response to all of this craziness and all this disruption and all this change, not allowing those emotions to drive you to take hold or to cause you to make really erratic, really, um, you know, just impulsive, bad decisions. <laughs> Saturn's also going to be creating kind of a sense, I would say, of like melancholy almost, where we're not going to be feeling as optimistic or as hopeful about the circumstances of the changes that we're undergoing, just because that Saturnian energy is like weighing on us emotionally. And so it's kind of like our emotions are preventing us or are what's actually, yeah, they're what's preventing us from moving forward with the change that we 
really, really desire. And that might already be in motion. It's kind of like we already set off on something. We're on this new trajectory. It's kind of too late. And now all of a sudden we're having doubts. We're having second thoughts. We're feeling kind of icky about it because this is uncomfortable. This is not the same. This is not what we're used to. And so Saturn's going to be weighing on us a little bit more so, especially in that emotional sense. And Saturn's really being highlighted. It's really the focal point of this energy. Um, you know, while I'm not saying too much that I really love about this full moon, in the next couple of weeks after, there are some really positive mitigating influences that'll help us out with some of this craziness that we've been experiencing. And there's also some really positive energy that we'll be talking about as well. But before we get into that, I just want to mention for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Heather Eland. I'm a professional astrologer and a teacher who teaches astrology to students who are struggling to put all of the different bits and pieces together uh, to help them to give to learn to give meaningful, accurate astrology readings with confidence. The best way I do this is through my Cosmic Academy of Astrology, which is my year-long astrology program. You can find information about that down in the description below, along with a link to the waitlist, so you can get notified the next time our doors open. Um, and I also have a free Astrology 101 PDF guide, my gift to you, to help you get started with learning astrology, so you can piece together your own chart and understand these free forecasts that I give to you uh, every single week or you know every other week now <laughs> so you can understand those more completely and so that link is also down in the description below check that out um, and in these videos I always start with a five to ten minute general overview please try not to skip this because it does provide an important context for what we'll be getting into in the forecast for all 12 signs which is a little bit more detailed and focused on you speaking of which when we do get into the forecast for all 12 signs make sure you listen to your rising sign your sun sign and your moon sign to get a more holistic overview of the energy for the coming two weeks your rising sign will be the most predominant energy your sun sign will be secondary and your moon sign is important to listen to as well although this energy will be more internalized and subjective finally at the end of every single video i do a brief two to three minute overview of next of the next two weeks energy which will be beginning with the uh, new moon in the sign of virgo and so i'm super excited for that and make sure you stick around until the end if you want to get that information okay so kind of getting back into the energy of these next couple of weeks as promised, we do have <laughs> some stuff that's okay. Um, so on the 11th, the energy is super, super intense. On the 14th, it intensifies, but also kind of depressurizes a little bit at the same time because Mars is actually um, going to be in a really nice trine with Pluto. So Mars will still be in the sign of Taurus, but instead of only just being this like pressure cooker energy only amplifying this like intensity only making a square with a malefic you know because the, the two malefic energies are in square in this configuration it's also going to be doing something really good it's kind of like we've installed out we've installed out we've installed out mars doesn't love to be in taurus mars wants to do things fast it wants to get things done it wants quick rapid results and in the sign of Taurus it really has to slow down take things into consideration take its time make sure that what it's accomplishing and what you're setting out to do is sustainable sustainability is a big thing with that Taurus energy so is what you're doing going to be long lasting is it sustainable can you maintain this um, is it going to hurt people in the long term or is it going to help is it going to hurt you in the long term or is it going to help these are all things that we're kind of dealing with and, and weighing as we go through this configuration with especially the full moon. And when we look at, um, you know, what's coming up just a few days after that, we have Mars in trine with Pluto, which is kind of like this energy of like really focused, intense, um, ambitious, driven energy where you can manifest what you really want to manifest, but you got to really focus on it. You got to pick one thing and you got to laser focus your attention and energy. And that thing, you know, in the earth signs can be something really tangible. And so it could be a psychic and psychological and, and actual physical focus too, because that Mars is like your physical energy. It's action really lasered in on something that you want to achieve. What's the most important thing out of all the changes that you want to make? Make, it's going to allow you to think about that and to make it happen, right? To draw it in like a magnet or to push forward and the seas will part. And so that's what's going on with that Mars trying to Pluto. 
Again, that's August 14th. That makes things a little bit nicer. And then later on in the month, um, around August 15th and 16th, we have Mercury, which is going to be exalted and in its home sign in the sign of Virgo. It's going to be making a really beautiful trine with the North Node and Uranus, which are still tightly configured in that conjunction. And so this is where we're going to be able to wrap our minds around uh, our new plans, our new life, because a lot of people are going through some major life changes right now. This is where you're going to be able to take those plans and translate them into something really workable. This is where you're going to be able to uh, take the changes that you're going through and communicate them really effectively, right? And so I really do love this energy. It provides a mitigating influence where all of a sudden our brains, our thoughts start to become much more clear and we're able to like hash things out rationally, logically, or through our communications with others. And so I love, love, love that energy too. And then even after that, so on the 18th, we have Venus, which is one of the benefic planets in trine with Jupiter, which is the other benefic planet. <laughs> and so we have this Venus-Jupiter trine, the two most beneficial energies in astrology coming together, doing things harmoniously. <laughs> And so this is an energy where we can kind of take a step back, breathe a sigh of relief. Relief. This is a really nice energy for doing things that are really joyful, that help you to experience a lot of pleasure, a lot of fun, um, especially in the signs that it's going to be in. You know, in the uh, in the fire signs, this is really about getting yourself out there and doing things that you love, that are connected with your heart, and finding and experiencing joy through your actions. And so that's going to be a big part of the month as well, or at least the next couple of weeks with that Venus trying to Jupiter. And so there are some good things coming um, after this full moon. We just got to get past this last little final burst. <laughs> and yes, it will be activated again on and off throughout the year. But for right now, we'll get that little bit of reprieve in between. And so um, that's what's going on this week. And so let's get into the forecast for all 12 signs. Um, and yeah, starting with Aries and Aries rising. Okay, so for Aries and for Aries rising, this full moon is happening in your 11th house, which is the house of friends, social networks, group associations, and people that you surround yourself with by choice. There could be some sort of hardship or challenge or limitation or restriction that you are experiencing or I should say re-experiencing with Saturn in retrograde that's being highlighted at the time of this full moon. This is something that's been ongoing, that's been plaguing you or causing you issues on and off since the start of 2021 and it's coming back around in a way that's a little bit more intense. This is also highlighting the way to the need to be socially responsible with the way that you deal with your money, your finances, your resources, your ambitions and drive around your material possessions. And so it's about taking a step back and looking at um, what you're doing financially, where you're spending your money, the way that you're earning your money, the way that you're kind of maintaining your resources and how this impacts kind of the greater good or how this impacts other people in your life um, or in kind of just in general. This is a humanitarian energy in that 11th house, of course. Um, this is also highlighting the need to create greater stability and longevity in all of your relationships, not just your friendships, but all of your partnerships, one-on-one -on -one close relationships, especially if you are an Aries rising anywhere from, let's say, um, 20 to 25 degrees, you're going to be feeling that the most. Actually, I would say even more than that because we have the moon at 19 degrees and Saturn at 22. So let's go with 13. <laughs> 13 to 25 degrees, you're going to be feeling that the most. Um, so yeah, so this is a big time for you to get really solid on which relationships are going to be really long lasting, which ones are going to stand the test of time, and which people you maybe want to purge or let go of, especially if it's a recurring issue, like you're repeatedly having the same issue with the same group of friends or the same person. That could be something that's really highlighted at this time. Um, or if they're just bringing you down, like they're causing you emotional distress when it comes to your financial goals and ambitions, and maybe make, making you feel guilty about about what it is that you want to do if that's the case you know you might want to rethink that relationship and that could be a big part of what's going on here uh, at the time of this full moon for you and then for Taurus and for Taurus rising 
So for Taurus, this full moon is happening in your 10th house of career and public reputation. You've been undergoing changes in really your whole life over the course of this past couple of weeks. Um, you yourself are changing, your relationships are shifting, your home life and your family life is changing, and there's something weighing on you when it comes to your career. It could be that you want more freedom, you want more independence, you want to be more who you are out in the world, and to do so in a really unique and really um, independent way, like in a way that you've never done before. Maybe you want to rebel against your current circumstances, your current paradigm, but there's something going on up here <laughs> that's not allowing you to do so. That could come in the form of a boss or a superior not letting you branch out and you know do your ideas or do the things that you are really lit up or excited about. It could be a government, a, a governmental body that's restricting you or preventing you from branching out and moving or doing the thing that you want to do. Um, it could be that somebody in a position of power and authority that holds weight over you um, could be like putting a damper on your plans and it could be something that you've already dealt with. It's kind of like, oh my gosh, this again? <laughs> I have dealt with this already time and time again. We've talked about this already time and time again. Why do we have to go through this situation? Um, and so it could feel kind of frustrating on that end where it's like, I finally got some momentum going why is this stalling out but it's really about taking stock of uh, what's going on in terms of how this is going to impact the bigger picture for your career goals and plans not just right now but well into the future this is looking at how this is going to impact not just you but your children your children's children your children's children's children and the impact you're going to be having on the world as a result of the changes that you're making again in all areas of life but especially when it comes to what you're putting out there in the world in your career um, it's kind of like this pivotal moment where something is manifesting and you do you are starting to see some of the results from a lot of the hard work you've been putting in but there's still more challenge there's still more work to do uh, but you will get through that and it will start to pass especially after the end of this year um, and it's not something you haven't dealt with before most likely so you kind of already know um, what this is going to entail for Gemini and for Gemini rising so for Gemini this full moon is happening in your ninth house which is the house of um well, it's the house of a lot of things, but it's the house of adventure. <laughs> it's the house of foreign countries and your connection to people with foreign countries. And so this could be an energy where you could have a pivotal moment where, um, you know, something comes through when it comes to maybe travel plans or plans to make a big move or a connection with somebody in a foreign land. But there's hurdles that you have to overcome. There's obstacles that come up kind of suddenly or unexpectedly that don't necessarily allow you to do the full thing that you want to do, to have the big adventure all the way. Like you have to take care of certain responsibilities first or you have to kind of rein it in slightly in order to do the thing that you want to do. The same could be said for maybe um, an educational pursuit or if you're publishing a book or you know anything that has to do with sharing information and teaching and sharing your wisdom that you've gained through your own direct experience there's something going on here that's preventing you from really putting it out there really going all in um, so you're having to kind of take a step back and think about it and think it through there's a hurdle that's been recurring for you and getting this out there in the world and it's coming back around it could even be a hurdle to your actual education in the sense that like maybe you are going back to school or we're wanting to go back to school and all of a sudden something comes up and it's like oh crap maybe I'm not going to be able to do that or I have this extra work I have to put in in order to make it happen you know is this even worth it and so that's something you're going to have to think about you're going to have to weigh for yourself um, but definitely this is a time where something is manifesting but it's also getting stalled out in a lot of ways so you're going to have to put in some work if you really want to make it happen for cancer and for cancer rising for Cancer, this energy is happening in your 8th house, which is the house of debt, taxes, inheritance, joint finances, insurance, other people's money, all of those fun things. Um, and so there could be something that's sort of coming to fruition right now where all of a sudden, you know, you're seeing the manifestations of a lot of the hard work that you've been doing on your, finan on your finances. And um, maybe it's like, 
yes, I'm finally seeing progress here, but I'm not as far as I want to be. Um, I've had these obstacles. There's this new obstacle coming up and it's stalling me out a little bit. Like maybe you wanted to be 10 steps ahead and you're only two steps ahead of where you were last year. Just think about it in terms of like, hey, last year I would have been grateful to be where I'm at right now. So if that is the case and you are making progress, kind of try to look at it that way. And this isn't about just doing something in the moment to relieve some sort of pressure or to relieve some sort of burden. This is about making sure that you're setting yourself up for success with your finances or in your joint finances with your partner for the next 30 year cycle of Saturn. So this isn't about like instant gratification, although with Mars, Uranus and the North Node squaring all this, you might want some instant gratification. <laughs> <laughs> if you push too hard for that, you're going to create a mess and that mess is going to be 10 times harder to clean up. So just keep that in mind. Um, this could be uh, something coming to fruition for you involving like a loan or an opportunity for financing for something, again, where you have some extra obstacles or hurdles to take care of. It doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means it's going to take a little longer and it's going to take some extra work. And there's going to be a lot of impatience on your end emotionally and psychologically, but that's okay. This could also be bringing up some sort of fear or anxiety from the past that's connected to your past around not just your finances, but really anything in all walks of life. It could especially be around um, power struggles or issues involving your friendships and your group associations, people that you surround yourself with by choice. And there could absolutely be power struggles coming up right now. It could be that you really want to do something and you want to take like leadership of something within a group. And there's something going on behind the scenes, either psychologically, there's a fear that's preventing you from doing it, or there could be actual interactions with people where there are power struggles and they're holding power over you and you're not sure if you're going to be able to make it happen. Um, just know that you're playing you're playing the long game here. You're not doing this just for right now. And so you have to strike a balance between pushing, 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 and thinking about how this is going to impact those relationships in the long term and whether or not that's worth it, where you need to step back and where you need to step up. Okay. And for Leo and for Leo rising, lucky Leo, you've been hit real hard, just like all of the fixed signs. Um, and you know, this time period is no exception to that. However, you will be getting a little bit of alleviation when it comes to the career stuff. Uh, you'll have some, some good, I think a positive message coming to you sometime in the next couple of weeks, especially that second week of this, um, of this period here of the waning phase of the lunar cycle. You could have a positive message coming in um, about your finances and your work. That could be unexpected and really exciting for you. But there are some conflicts going on here. So you're having this full moon in your seventh house, which is the house of relationships. And so this is really highlighting your ne the need to get serious or to recommit yourself to certain relationships. This is people from the past coming back around and you saying, hmm, maybe I should have taken that connection more seriously. Maybe I should have committed myself. Um, maybe, you know, I need to recommit myself to my partner or maybe what I need from my partner is for them to reinstate their commitment to me. This could be not just in marriage, not just in love relationships, especially this could be in family relationships and in business partnerships. And so it could be that you're renewing a contract or reviewing a contract. It could be that you're extending or lengthening a contract or going back on a contract in order to um, maybe work your way out of it. You're not gonna be able to sever it right away if that's the case. You're gonna have to work on getting out and being responsible about it and take care of your end of the responsibilities first. But all of these things could potentially be coming up for you. Um, if they are, know that there will be hurdles, know that there will be frustrations, but you're revisiting this for a reason. By the time you come to the end of the year, you're gonna be like, wow, I'm really glad that you know this came up and I was able to kind of hash it out. Um, but for some of you, this could even be that you're gonna be ending like a marriage or ending a partnership. And it's, it's not gonna happen all at once, it's gonna take some work. And if you're not ending it, you're gonna be working on it. And again, that's not gonna happen all at once, it's gonna take some work, but it's gonna be worthwhile in either case on whatever end of the spectrum you fall. Okay, <clears throat> and for Virgo and for Virgo rising. So for Virgo, this full moon is happening in your sixth house, which is the house of health, work and daily routines. Virgos like all of those things. Um, but right now, those things are going to be feeling like way more of a burden. There's something that you want to do that's really exciting. There's like this 
ambition you have to go out there to experience life, to have an adventure, to travel, to learn something really new and exciting and outside the box and maybe even weird, or to teach it. And there's something going on in your day-to-day -day routine, mundane experience that's been preventing you from making that progress, from making that a reality, from fully shifting and changing um, in alignment with your new paradigm, your new belief systems. And that's okay. You're going to have to take some time. So you're revisiting these challenges. You're revisiting this burden so that way you can either work on making it better work on delegating or work on letting it go but it's not gonna go away all at once and so this is really coming to fruition right now it could also be that something is um, being highlighted or manifesting right now related to your work and like maybe even you are hoping to get some recognition for something but it's not as grandiose as you had expected like maybe they're not recognizing your virgo qualities and all the details and organization and effort that you put into it and it could be a little bit of a bummer it could cause you to want to change something or just break free but again it's about playing the long game it's about looking at the long-term ramifications of what you're doing um, and sticking it out i would say that you're going to be feeling a little bit more burdened and and burnt out around the time of this full moon um, but you do have to kind of work with that energy a little bit as opposed to retreating. The rest of the month, you'll have more of that retreat energy. <laughs> it's going to be falling more in the, uh, the 12th house. But at the time of this full moon, you kind of got to do some work. All right. And then for Libra and for Libra rising. So for Libra, this full moon is happening in your fifth house, which is the house of joy, friends, or not friends, well, friends are on the opposite end. <laughs> That's activated too, actually. Friends are activated. But joy, um, you know, it's about joy, pleasure, spontaneity, fun, hobbies, interests, the things that you love to do because you love to do them because they're connected to your heart. This is also about um, children could be part of this, romance could be part of this. Uh, there's something here, though, that's coming to fruition. It's manifesting. It's really coming to light around those topics. So it could be that there's something that's been stifling you and preventing you from going all in on a hobby, on a passion, on something that you love. It could be that you've been um, restricting yourself in a lot of ways from doing things that you love that bring you joy because you feel so burdened. You feel like you can't do that. Or it could be that something's coming to fruition in terms of taking something that you love and turning it into something practical like a business, but there's still hurdles. And those hurdles and obstacles are probably coming from your finances. And so that's an area that you really do have to make some dramatic changes with, but you have to look at how this is going to impact you long term and how this is going to impact the long term goals you have when it comes to the things that you love and your, your joy. And also long term goals that you have maybe for your children. Like, is this going to impact their college fund? Is this going to impact your ability? to buy your kids the thing that they want or that, that they need. Um, and so looking at all of these different areas and avenues, I think it's going to be super important. It could even be that there's financial chaos going on and that's what's preventing you from fully embodying and experiencing, you know, that joyful state that you would otherwise, I, I would say, be pretty good at bringing into your life. So, um, Take the time to rework your strategies, to rework your day-to-day -day experience, to add little bits and pieces of, of, thing, of the thing that you love to do. So it's kind of like with Saturn, you have to do a small little bit every single day to get to your goal. And so if your goal is to experience more joy or to do this thing that you love more, or to even turn it into a business, instead of going all in all at once, right now it's about making small progress. And I honestly recommend like taking notes of that progress. So every single day, it's like I, you know, did one hour of this thing and I made this much progress. So that way you can go back and you can see it because it's going to be so small and so incremental that in the moment it might feel, especially right now, really frustrating. But when you see the whole picture of everything that you created, that's going to be huge for you. For Scorpio, for Scorpio rising. So for Scorpio, this full moon is happening in your fourth house, which is the house of home, family, property, real estate. And so um, there's some there's some stuff going on down there. <laughs> so for Scorpio, um, you know, it could be that something that you've worked really hard on or worked really hard for when it comes to your home, when it comes to your property, it could even be like a big renovation project or something like that comes to fruition or comes to completion or comes around in some way. Um, and so that could be part of it, but it's also as you're celebrating this, this moment of culmination, it's like, oh my gosh, I got this far, but there's still so much to do. <laughs> I 
yeah, I fixed this, but there's, look at all this stuff that still needs to be fixed. Or I made these changes or I moved to this place, but you know, I'm still not quite there. I'm still not quite happy. And so there is going to be this kind of melancholy energy where it's like, I did this great, but like, I still got all this work to do. <laughs> You're not going to be able to allow yourself to enjoy it as much. And that could also have to do with like family relationships and things like that as well. Um, there's definitely something going on here too where this is not the best time to interact with family members. Um, I mean, you probably have to to a certain extent, but there could be some challenges, hardships, um, responsibilities weighing on you when it comes to your family. And that could be a source of chaos and disruption, but also a source of like burden. Um, that's being highlighted right now as well. Just know that these are things that you'll be working on and working toward resolving over these next few months. And even though right now it feels like an extra burden and it feels extra chaosy, um, it's not going to feel like that way forever. Right now it's just being amplified a lot more so than normal. Uh, for Sagittarius and for Sagittarius rising. So for Sagittarius, this energy is happening in your uh, third house, which is the house of communication. It's the house of learning something new. It's the house of travel and travel plans. This full moon could highlight the culmination of a big travel plan or something involving a vehicle or transportation um, or like a short distance travel plan or something like that. But it could also highlight some sort of hardship or disruption or burden that's preventing you from going all in. Um, it could be that this is going to be more work than you thought or it's going to be delayed in some way or it's just not going to be as fun or as light or as happy as you might have wanted it to be. Um, but it's still going to, I think, happen. It's like this is happening still, but this unexpected chaos happened here in my sixth house of health work and daily routines. I have to kind of move toward that. And so this is going to cause me to have to like put a damper on our plans or um, think about things in a different way. This is also highlighting your mindset and the way that your mindset and your negative day-to-day uh, -day self talk and the way that you um, express yourself maybe more pessimistically right now. Normally that's not you Sagittarius, um, but when you're communicating on a day-to-day -day basis with people in your surroundings and in your environment, you could come across as a little bit more stern, a little bit more pessimistic, a little bit more realistic. And that could be highlighted too. Like, man, why are you such a bummer? <laughs> <laughs> why do you, why you gotta look at it like that way and that could be part of this energy too where all of a sudden you realize like hey I've been kind of down on myself or I've been down on this thing that's going on or down on this project like it could even be that you are self-sabotaging through your mindset and through your day-to-day -day communications and self-talk you are sab sabotaging the changes and the progress that need to be made in the areas of work like maybe there's a new work thing that's going on that's really exciting for you it's an opportunity but you're like well I'm gonna look at it realistically I don't think it's gonna work out and you're kind of like you know you're the bummer in this situation <laughs> So if that is the case, think about shifting your mindset or work on creating a new mindset around whatever it is that's disrupting you in your day-to-day -day life because um, that's still going on for a little while and you kind of need to have that openness and that ability to shift and change right now. You don't want to be getting in your own way. Okay. And then for Capricorn and for Capricorn Rising. So for Capricorn, this full moon is happening in your second house of money and resources. This could be highlighting the culmination of a big financial project or a big expenditure um, that's coming to fruition or coming to a close or like finally manifesting and you're seeing it fully. It could also be that you're seeing the actual physical financial burden of this thing that you're that you're going or that's been ongoing. It's kind of like you've taken on an additional financial burden, maybe you've taken on a mortgage, maybe you've purchased something that was really expensive and now you're feeling it a little bit more and seeing it a little bit more. If that's the case, don't let that prevent you from experiencing joy, from doing the things that you love, from being creative, from being in that fifth house energy because there's a lot of good shake up energy going on there and it's hitting you, especially Capricorn, in a really positive way. You are changing in a really positive way. So for Capricorn, this is not a time to overspend, but this is also not a time to prevent yourself from enjoying your life. <laughs> and so that's what's going on for Capricorn. The other thing too is that there could be changes shifting um, in the area of children or unexpected new children coming into your life. We talked about that before in the last forecast. And again, don't let the financial pressure of it all prevent you from 
being happy about the situation if it's something that is joyful for you. So um, that's what's going on for Capricorn and for Capricorn rising. For Aquarius, this full moon is happening in your sign. And so this, um, this is a big full moon for you where you are in the spotlight. You've been working really hard to change a lot of things about yourself. You've been going through this like pressurized energy. Like I mentioned at the start of this video, this is like a pressure cooker energy right now where it's like the pressure, the pressure, the pressure, the pressure is on and it's building and building. The heat is building, except, you know, this is an energy where you might accidentally overdo it and kind of burn what you're cooking. <laughs> um, this is an energy where you, Aquarius, might overdo it and burn yourself out, especially if you have a lot of changes going on in your home, your family, your property, your family relationships, and you are putting so much pressure on yourself, Aquarius, to show up and be responsible, to do all the work, to do all the things, this is going to be highlighted right now. If you need to take a, a break or a breather, this is almost going to force your hand at that. It's kind of like, all right, I have too much weight. I need to focus on what's going on behind the scenes down here. Um, this is really showing me that because it's going to be weighing on you physically, psychologically, um, spiritually, if you're doing too much. This is also showing you kind of the benefits and the rewards of all of the hard work you've been putting in on yourself, on self-mastery, on self-understanding, on um, on creating a higher level of self-responsibility in your life. T holding yourself to a higher standard is what you've been doing, really, Aquarius. And this is showing you the results of those efforts. Um, and also, it's showing you where you've fallen short and where you need to go back and revisit, redo, revise, re-edit. It's kind of like you need to create a really good structure and foundation for who you're going to be and the way that you're going to be showing up for the next 30-year cycle of Saturn. You know, no pressure. <laughs> Um, but this is really highlighting that and how important this is, not just for you, but for the legacy that you're going to leave behind after your working years, for your relationships and setting really solid foundations through knowing yourself in order to be um, in a really healthy, solid relationship. But also you're setting this foundation for your family, for your family's future, and for the big changes that you want to make in that arena moving forward. And so that's what's going on for Aquarius. For Pisces and for Pisces rising. Um, so for Pisces, this full moon is happening in your 12th house, which is the house of rest, reprieve. It's the house where you go to hide away from the world. It's the house of solitude and seclusion. And this full moon might force you into a state of solitude or seclusion, either because you're feeling too burnt out and overwhelmed or because you just, you're craving it. You're like, I need to get out of here. I need to go like on a retreat. I need to go be by myself. I need to go hide from everyone and everything. And that's okay for you to do at this full moon. No, normally full moons are like more social and like, you know, outgoing. That's not this one. And it's especially not this one for you. So doing the inner work, doing the spiritual work, um, spending time focusing on your internal state and your internal reality, that's where you're going to get the most progress out of this full moon. It's kind of like the culmination of a lot of what's been building where you've been feeling or craving more of that solitude. And even if you haven't been craving solitude, this full moon could bring unexpected circumstances that come up through your communications, through your connections with your community, through your neighbors in your neighborhood. Maybe you're in a location where um, you know, you're being forced into seclusion. There are still some people in certain places in the world where they're doing stuff like that. Um, but you know, for you in particular, there's something going on here that might um, force your hand where it's like, okay, all of a sudden this unexpected thing came up, it's really wild, it's out of the blue, and now I need to spend some time you know, in this space where I'm not doing as much or where I'm not interacting as much. Um, and it's not gonna be for a very long time, I would say, for most Pisces, but that is something that's showing up here. Other than that, though, like the other parts of this energy, we talked about this in last week's forecast in really great detail. Um, this is showing up for you really positively in your relationships and in your connections with people and in your one-on-one -on -one connections with people. Um, but there is a little bit of diciness coming up this week. You could have a really unexpected communication that comes in that's very burdensome or very hurtful that shows you something that's been going on that's detrimental to you behind the scenes and behind closed doors that all of a sudden this secret, this this thing is out into the open and that could be something that's being revealed to you right now as well. Um, 
yeah, so this is also a full moon that's going to be more about letting go. So it could be that you need to let go of something that's really connected to these bigger cycles in your life, that's really connected even to past life cycles and experiences that is burdening you and preventing you from moving forward with all of these new and exciting ideas or these new and exciting relationships and connections. And so that could be part of this too. And so you could be working on letting go, ending, wrapping things up and purging at the time of this full moon more so than any other full moon, really. Um, and so that's what's going on for Pisces. <clears throat> and so that, you guys, was my forecast for all 12 signs. Um, in the next two-week forecast, we're going to be talking about the new moon in the sign of Virgo. And this new moon is at four degrees in Virgo. It's in a very tight square with Mars, which will be moving on to the sign of Gemini uh, prior to that time during this two weeks. And so it's another new moon that doesn't feel as... Great. Um, you know, the T-square also that we've been talking about this past week and the past two weeks before that, that's also going to be activated in new and exciting ways by Venus and Leo. It's not going to be as harsh. It's Venus. And we have this energy of the North Node and Uranus starting to separate but it's still highlighting it in our relationships. And so we might have um, unexpected disruptions financially, physically, aesthetically, um, and materially, right? But also in our one-on-one -on -one connections, our interactions with people, and the area of life where that'll show up will differ depending on your sign and your specific configuration in your chart, which of course we'll talk about in two weeks. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so, so you don't miss that forecast. Um, and you know, that new moon and square with Mars, it's a weird energy. We're going to be feeling really pumped, like really pumped. This is like an energy where you're going to be really wanting something very specific and you're going to feel like I'm going to make it happen. I would say that this could cause a lot of people to be putting pressure on others um, in this very naggy sort of perfectionistic way, which is not a normal Virgo trait, by the way. It's a Virgo trait when there's like difficult energy or when that person is off kilter. <laughs> and this Mars energy is bringing that in where you might you might be a little too much. You might be nitpicking to the point where you're going to like rub people the wrong way or cause some some issues, especially like interpersonally with others. Or you could be just holding yourself to way too high of a standard and nitpicking and like nagging yourself almost where it's like your internal dialogue is like way too overkill when it comes to what you're expecting for yourself, the high standards that you're holding for yourself, focusing way too much on all of the details and not seeing the bigger picture. That's going to be a part of this new moon. So when you're setting your intentions and setting up your plans for this new moon, keep that in mind. Just know that um, you're going to want to kind of find a way to take a step back so you're not so focused on every single detail that you're missing the whole point of the of the big picture, the whole point of what you're doing here. Um, and we'll talk about that again in two weeks in much more detail. Again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, like this video if you enjoyed it, and share it with your friends if you feel like they'd be it'd be beneficial to them to understand what's been going on and what will be going on in these next two weeks. I will see you all in the next one. Bye everyone.